this is a very important gathering uh, and uh, having both Italy, Israel, US and, and others represented is a reflection of everyone associated with this undertaking that if we're going to uh, turn the tide uh, against uh, the evil actors, we will have to work uh, closely in coordination. Just allow me one quick comment as uh, Ju January 27th is the uh, date, the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, uh, a sense for where we are in the world today is that in the height of the Cold War in the 1980s, the Soviet Union allowed the general, the Soviet general who liberated Auschwitz to come to our center in Los Angeles and speak uh, to the people of the United States and receive a recognition from us. That general was a Ukrainian. And so I understand that this January 27th, the Auschwitz uh, Museum at their official event will not be inviting Russia to participate. So without making any parallels, about past events or where we're going in the future, I find that to be a very compelling uh, and telling uh, maybe warning sign uh, to all of us about uh, how much more we have to work together. Recently, I sat down with Rabbi Heyer uh, to reflect on, uh, on, on a few questions, and I'd like to use my time primarily to share uh, some of the thoughts of our namesake, Simon Wiesenthal, that very relevant to uh, January 27th. The memories of the 20th century events are inexorably fading from our collective rearview mirror, uh, leaving us certainly here in the United States to ask on International Holocaust Remembrance Day, what might we still learn and teach from the Holocaust? This question is all the more relevant and poignant because the brave Holocaust survivors on whom we've relied to be the bridge between generations, people who put a human face on the mind-numbing six million uh, Jews murdered by Adolf Hitler's final solution, are inexorably leaving the world stage. Soon their personal narratives of terror, mass murder, helplessness, and irreconcilable loss during the Shoah and their struggle to find hope and love again in the post-World War II era, narratives that riveted generations of young people in classrooms, synagogues, and churches will soon be relegated to social media holograms. If they could, what lessons would these survivors of history's greatest crime leave for today's troubled world? What guidance could they provide for young people see still seeking to formulate their own fledgling moral GPS. We can't speak for every survivor of the Holocaust, but we were blessed to have known and worked with one, Simon Wiesenthal, the namesake of our center, who shared insights and hard truths with us and with the world based on his tragic experiences. As you know, a victim of the Nazis, he lost some 89 members of his family in the Shoah, and became the unofficial ambassador of millions of murdered Jews and managed to bring 1,100 Nazi war criminals before the bar of justice with little help from a largely uncaring world. Among his words of wisdom were these warnings from Simon. Quote, the history of mankind is the history of crimes. Recognize that there is evil in the world and be prepared to take action. Quote, our first reaction to Hitler was Jewish jokes. By the time we woke up to the threat, it was too late. When someone, anyone, declares they mean you harm, or worse, take them at their word. Anti-Semitism did not die with Hitler in his Berlin bunker in 1945. Can the Holocaust happen again? The next time, the victim may not be a Jew, the perpetrator may not look like Hitler, but when you have organized hatred, a crisis in society, and technology, anything is possible. Had the technology that Nazi Germany used in the 30s and 40s 
been available in 1492, no Jew would have survived in Spain, no Catholic in England, no Protestant in France. He was asked, was I surprised by how many Nazis there were? No, only by how few anti-Nazis there were. Silence is admittance. We Jews cannot defeat anti-Semitism on our own. The Holocaust exposed how alone we Jews were in time of dire threats. One lesson we must take from the Shoah is that we need new allies and new friends to effectively fight Jew hatred. While the Jewish people alone were targeted by Hitler's final solution, millions of innocent non-Jews also perished. If we want the world to remember our tragedy, we must be willing to speak out when others become victims of crimes against humanity. And finally, and you can find these words embedded inside our Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles, freedom is not a gift from heaven. It must be fought for, for every, on every day. To this, to this, uh, this uh, International Holocaust Commembrance Day, we would add this dictum, standing in solemn silence for six million dead Jews is of no value if you show little or no regard for living Jews. We hope that on this day, the events surrounding it and the memories they invoke will inspire Germans to show solidarity with their Jewish neighbors who are victimized by anti-Semitism, including on the streets of Berlin. We hope that this day will awaken a French judiciary to her finally hold perpetrators of deadly Jew hatred culpable for crimes in a court of law. We hope British police will better protect religious Jews targeted for hate crimes regularly in their own neighborhoods in London. We hope our elected officials, faith leaders, and neighbors across the US will act with bipartisan resolve and solidarity against the hate crimes suffered by American Jewry. We hope that today's commemoration will finally witness social media giants ending their marketing capabilities given to anti-Semites and bigots on their powerful platforms. If we learn but one lesson from the Shoah this January 27th, it's this, remembering and teaching to young people, it always starts with words, it always starts with Jews, but it never just ends with words and it never stops just with the Jews.